So, as you guys can see, we finally got my motor back. So let's get it to assembly. As you can see, Rafa is wearing the perfect shirt right here. <laughs> Life's too short to stay stuck. And I swear it would all be downhill after the, you know, got this shirt. Yeah. Downhill? What do you mean? If anything, your life just got more exciting. No, no, you're a bad influence. I don't know why I hang around with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, as you can see, this is definitely not a stock motor. This is my built motor. This uh, came out of uh, this car. Just so, just so you guys know what all happened. I'm not sure if I really made it apparent on the channel or not. But basically what happened was um, the motor was totally fine. I just sent it out to go get um, redone. Like, and by that I mean like with new uh, new bearings, new piston rings, and as well as to get a board out for the larger head studs. That way I can definitely hold on the power. So I got it back. It took a little while because uh, when they pinned the main bearings on it, it was up to like a month behind on that. So yeah, it was kind of a long process. And right now we're gonna go ahead and start twerking down the head. Um, I already torqued them down, but I'm just gonna recheck them because it's been like about like a week now that they've been sitting like that underneath that bag over there. So I'm gonna recheck them. They're, it's for a really high number as well. The center torque, um, which is one and two, as you can see, is right there. They go up to 125, and the outer ones is 115. So that's pretty ridiculous compared to like the your standard size because standard size is about 90 foot pounds so we actually have a uh, stock size head stud standing around right here but it looks pretty pretty decent size not gonna lie but when you compare it to these ones um, so that's the stock one it's kind of hard to do it on camera but yeah definitely you can definitely tell and these are a little bit special um, not your traditional half studs that you can get like off the market. This is stuff that, um, that they custom uh, thread more into the block that we can get more thread engagement. That way the, the stud doesn't pull out from, from lifting. So yeah. Yeah. And you know, Ralph is pretty good at, he's not that good at pulling out so. I tried but. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's start bolting on the head. The head. Recheck them. So we got it on 125 now. So I'm gonna check the center ones, as you saw in the paper from before. 125 on the center ones, 115 on the outer ones. And I waited, like how we did on the other builds. I'm not sure if you guys seen it in the, in the previous episodes, but if you want to go ahead and check them out. But basically, you let it sit there for like like a day at a minimum. But I let it sit for like over a week. I'm gonna recheck them and it should move a tiny bit. If it doesn't, then it's good. If it does, then that's good too. I think we might have set the camera down. Yeah, we might have to set the camera down. 125 is kind of a bit just to do it. It doesn't help you're on the boogie board. So after you thoroughly clean your shaft, you want to make sure you lube it up with some cam shield right there. And if you guys are, are aware, we're using GSC. As you can see, it, it even tells you right exhaust S2s. So that's pretty cool. And these are their brand new uh, billet ones. Um, I had to get brand new uh, cam shafts. My, my old cams, they were having some pre-mature wear on them so they had to get me new cams and I'll show you a little segment of what my cams look like but they're not too bad but we're, we're definitely far from what they recommend. I ended up buying this, uh, P it's called a PNL cam seal tool. And with this, uh, it's supposed to make it a lot easier installing the cam seals. And to be honest, all you have to do is just 
get the get the bowl that they supplied and just thread it through and the seal goes in effortlessly so I bought this just simply for the fact that um, well this is my my third or fourth motor and we're barely halfway through the year and not, this is not including um, all the rebuilds that I've done on my car so this is just like the cars that are behind the camera and Jose's car and then like my car now. So yeah, this tool, I'll put a link in the description down below. It's a pretty cool tool, it's not, not a whole lot of money, but definitely well worth it. It gets the seal flat as a pancake against the thing and that's what you want. So yeah, really recommend it. And it's not sponsored, I just like, if I see a good product, I'm just gonna talk about it to you guys because I really like it. For the oiling system for this car, I'm still gonna be using my Killer B. Uh, oil baffle and I'm also going to be still using my Killer B oil pickup tube. I didn't really think it was necessary to try and uh, change it out because to with the pickup tube there's really no downside to it with the Killer B because our wells are top notch and I don't see any cracking so I didn't really see the need of spending another 150 bucks so I just cleaned it up real quick and on top of that I went with um, a Killer B oil pan so you guys have probably seen this on the channel, but basically what it is, it holds that I think like another quart and a half or something like that um, of oil. It also comes with like everything that you need because um, with a larger pan, it sits a little bit lower. So you want this uh, pickup tube to sit a little bit lower. That way you get to the very bottom of the oil pan, try and suck up all that oil. So let's get to installing it. So uh, with the, what I was mentioning about earlier before is that they include a spacer to try and bring the uh, oil, oil pickup tube more, more down into the oil pan. And with the spacer, you want to make sure the blue bolts um, are up top with the, where it goes to the oil, um, oil pump. And then the black bolts uh, supply with the spacers as well. Um, you got to make sure those are in the back. It's holding bracket and, you might, and it goes through the baffle and the ones in the back, um, there's nothing supporting them so you just gotta make sure you get it in there correctly. So we're about to start talking turbo and we got the manifold almost on as you can see. Just a little bit of space right there. But it cannot go down any further due to the fact that it's resting on the pan right there. So. I'm gonna have to contact this uh, this company. Um, if you guys aren't aware, the turbo kit that I have is called B and M Performance, and basically it's a guy his named Evan. He makes his own custom uh, turbo kits for Subarus primarily, and I have to contact him because I know he was saying that they do fit the Killer, the Killer B oil pan, but mine didn't fit. So I'm gonna have to contact him, see if he can maybe send me a new one. That way I can get this uh, ball on the road. But yeah, it kind of sucks because literally after this, it would have been the up pipe, and then we're gonna slap down this. That big daddy right there. This big daddy right here. Oh, big daddy. So this is a 6870 um, with a 1.15 hot side. So yeah, it's a big, it's a big girl. So, uh, damn. Kind of sad now. Funny mother. Yeah. Just so you guys know, I'm not playing around. Cannot see light at all through there. So it kind of sucks. Oh well. It is what it is. So we're just going to take that manifold off and and I don't know, just go from there and just see what else we can do. We can probably put on the intake manifold. Well, I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, I didn't show you guys yet. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys probably ever seen it. I got it powder coated. Um, the same color as the turbo you saw earlier. So yeah, so that's where we're sitting at. And I don't know.